Hi, my name's Megan and we will be talking about McDonald's versus Burger King. I will be talking about the introduction, <laughs> learning a memory and the conclusion. Hi, I'm Sophie and I will be talking about motivation and lifestyle. The company we have chosen to talk about is McDonald's. We will be comparing this to one of their major competitors, Burger King. McDonald's was first established in 1948 by Dick and Mac McDonald in California. In 2017, McDonald's operated 37,241 restaurants in 120 countries. 3,133 were company-operated restaurants and 34,108 were franchised restaurants. McDonald's aims to focus on making new licensees successful in the system which will increase restaurant growth and menu innovation. The revenue growth has increased from 2.0% in 2013 to 7.3% in 2017. We chose to do McDonald's versus Burger King because Burger King are McDonald's biggest competitor in the UK. They use similar marketing methods so it is useful to compare the methods they use and see which was the most successful and see what they did well and what they could improve on. McDonald's predominantly use, uses cognitive learning. For example, in the majority of the adverts which they release, they are usually a real life situation or experience that a consumer would have. This encourages new or returning customers to visit McDonald's restaurants. McDonald's also show consumers who are eating their food having a very good experience as simile that would encourage people to want to go. However, they are not the only fast food restaurant to advertise their business like this. Burger King also uses a very similar method to persuade people to visit and try their foods. In all adverts, it is very important to show the brand image as it is the best way to promote brand recognition. McDonald's have used successful advertising campaigns to help consumers retain the information. An example of this is the McDonald's Christmas advert 2019. This advert is called the Reindeer Ready Campaign. It focuses on a real life scenario featuring a little girl and Archie the Reindeer. This advert shows the family going to McDonald's for reindeer treats and then it switches from animation to real life to make it more relatable to the viewers. The marketing director of McDonald's says that the advert is done in the eyes of Ellie, the little girl. The aim of, was to demonstrate scenes which will be recognised by parents across the country as the whole family comes together to get reindeer ready. In conjunction with this, McDonald's will be giving out free reindeer treats, also known as the carrot bags, for free on Christmas Eve. This links to the cognitive learning theory as they are showing a real life experience which a consumer would have. They also make sure that the M sign, also known as golden arches, is shown in every advert as consumers are a lot more likely to recognise that it is McDonald's through seeing that sign. The advert is currently positioned third in the 2019 Christmas adverts. It has been rated 4.8 in the star category and is already forecast to result in an immediate increase in sales. Learning is a relatively permanent change in behaviour that is caused by experience. Learning can occur through simple associations between a stimulus and a response or via a complex series of cognitive activities. Many businesses such as McDonald's rely on consumers remembering their brands, product attributes, how their products can be used and how they compare to their competitors. For McDonald's, they spend a lot of money on advertising to ensure that consumers recognise their brand easily. They are currently the sixth most important brand in the world. There are two most common types of learning theory. Behavioural, this is a response to change in the environment, linking a new behaviour to a stimulus by providing reinforcement after the correct behaviour is produced. When behavioural theory is, is used, practice is, practice is necessary and also constant repetition. Cognitive, this is learning through mental processes. This includes learning strategies which help a consumer to process and retain information. Many consumers from McDonald's learn unintentionally. For example, when hearing the adverts with the tagline and the music tune, many co consumers will unintentionally remember the tagline and instantly link it to McDonald's. I will now pass over to Sophie who will talk about motivation. Motivation refers to the process that causes people to behave as they do. It occurs when a need is aroused and a customer wishes to satisfy. Consumers' needs and wants guide marketing decisions. A need reflects a basic goal, such as necessities like eating and drinking. These necessities are there to solve a problem such as hunger. 
A want is a form of consumption used to satisfy the need, such as eating at a certain restaurant in, to, in order to satisfy your hunger. The drive reduction theory of motivation became popular during the 1940s and 1950s as a way to explain behaviour, learning and motivation. The theory was created by behavioralist Clark Hull and further developed by his collaborator Kenneth Spence. According to the theory, the reduction of drive is the prime force behind motivation. This focuses on how motivation becomes from biological needs or drives. In this theory, Hull proposed a person's behaviour is an external display of desire to satisfy physical needs. This will end with the person reducing their problem. The process of having tension, for example, hunger, then achieving the goal, for example, eating at McDonald's. The strength of this drive depends on the goal of, that was met. Consumers have many choices that can help them achieve their goal. For example, if you're at a service station, there are many different options to satisfy the tension of hunger, so they could go to Burger King instead of McDonald's. So expectancy pull theory. Room's expectancy theory assumes that behavioural Behaviour results from conscious choices among alternatives, whose purpose is to maximise pleasure and minimise pain. <laughs> we are motivated to choose certain products as we expect a positive outcome. For example, someone may choose McDonald's over Burger King as they expect McDonald's to provide a better outcome. Hall state, stated that effort, performance and motivation are linked in a person's motivation. He uses variables, expectancy instrumentality and valence to account for this. Every person has different needs that they want to satisfy. For example, a campaign that McDonald's use frequently is a student offer to satisfy needs for a cheap and easy meal. McDonald's pushes the consumer to buy their product by offering a free mayo chicken when they show a valid student ID. Students or business people may be pushed to buy from McDonald's because of their free Wi-Fi, cleverly ad advertised using their fries to look like the Wi-Fi symbol. This has been proven to increase sales as it encourages students that they are getting a good deal and not having to spend much money. McDonald's use visual marketing to make their food look appetising and use the words big, beefy, bliss in their adverts to act like a push to consumers to buy McDonald's over their competitors. The incentive is that it's cheap and tasty. Burger King also use campaigns such as student deals. For example, they have the Whopper Junior Plus, a small fries for $1.99. However, this is not advertised as well as McDonald's, as McDonald's posts it on their social media, which reaches a wide range of students, as it's a popular advertising method for students. Next, I will be talking about Freud's theory of the unconscious mind. His theory talks about the three levels of the mind, which are unconscious, pre-conscious, and conscious mind. According to his theory, the unconscious mind is always completely outside of your awareness. The pre-conscious mind is all the information that you're not aware of at the time, but you can recall it. And the conscious mind is everything inside of your awareness. Freud uses the analogy of an iceberg to describe these levels. At the surface, you can see the conscious mind. These are what are the focus of your attention. The pre-conscious mind level is what can be re re retrieved by memory and the unconscious mind is what Freud believed consists of the processes that cause certain behaviour. This is the part of the mind that you cannot see. Freud believed that the segment of a person's personality stems from the conflict of satisfying one's needs and behaving appropriately in a society. This conflict is split into three components, the ID, the superego and the ego. These work together to make up a person's personality. The ID is the impulsive part of the unconscious mind, which responds directly and immediately to basic urges. An example of this is a newborn baby is all ID and is later develops an ego and a superego. The superego is the part of the mind that makes decisions and faces the consequences that they, of that decision. The last is the ego, which is present in all three levels of the consciousness. Its goal is to satisfy the demands of the ID in a safe and socially, socially acceptable way. In this Mc, McDonald's ad on the slide, it appears an image of a burger with the text, the thing you want when you order a salad. 
This appeals to the ID aspect as it is saying that the unconscious mind would prefer a burger over a salad, but the superego overpowers the ID and makes the ego choose a healthier, more socially acceptable, acceptable option. This ad encourages consumers to choose a burger as it's telling them to listen to their unconscious mind. In the Burger King ad, it also appeals to the ID desires as on the poster it shows the tagline, have it your way, with an image of a burger with steam coming off it in the shape of a woman. This may be sexually suggestive to the unconscious mind. This ad may have been done to show the satisfaction of the burger. This makes the consumer want the burger as it's linked with satisfaction. The difference between McDonald's and Burger King in these ads is that McDonald's make it more obvious that this is what the unconscious mind wants, whereas Burger King are more subtle and you may not notice the woman in the steam in the first glance. Lifestyle and values. Market segmentation is the process of grouping consumers within a market according to similar needs, habits or attributes that can be addressed through marketing. Consumers are placed into distinct groups based on co common and unidentifiable in in traits. Demographic segmentation, this is to do with age, de gender, religion, race, income. McDonald's use demographic segmentation as it allows them to target consumers more accurately and find out which the find out consumer needs. However, Burger King are also also use demographic segmentation in a similar way, so this could make this type of segmentation a disadvantage for McDonald's. McDonald's use age category to help ensure they are meeting everyone's needs. A few examples of who they target are children. McDonald's promote Happy Meals as children are more attracted towards the delicious food which comes with a free toy inside the meal. These toys are often related to the most recent children's films or most popular characters such as Disney characters at the time. However, recently they have bought out Christmas toys in the Happy Meal and Frozen 2 character toys. This has been a great success for McDonald's as it persuades kids to want it even more if they are interested in the toy included. Families. Some McDonald restaurants also offer a playing place which allows a fun place for kids to enjoy both playing and eating. Often this attracts families with children. Teenagers. McDonald's have priced several pro products carefully to ensure it's suitable and affordable prices for teenagers. They also offer free Wi-Fi in some restaurants which attracts the younger generations. Burger King also offer very similar treats however they don't offer cheap prices as McDonald's do which means consumers are still drawn towards McDonald's. McDonald's use behavioural segmentation for occasions such as birthday parties. Burger King also offer, offer a birthday party package. Burger King released a campaign called Clown Free to take a dig at McDonald's by urging parents to book a party with Burger King over McDonald's. They used an image of McDonald's mascot, Ronald McDonald, accompanying a child in tears. McDonald's also use loyalty programs such as coffee stamps and their famous McDonald's Monopoly, which is done annually. The company earned up to 1.52 billion during this year's Monopoly. Monopoly gets customers returning as you can be an Insta winner and win something off the McDonald's menu. If you collect all the Monopoly pieces, you can win big prizes such as holidays. The only way to be in a chance of winning these prizes is to be a returning and regular customer of McDonald's. Burger King don't have any programs like Monopoly, but they do have the Burger King app where you can earn vouchers and spend to spend at the restaurant. This links to behavioural segmentation because it focuses on brand loyalty and is encouraging them to keep earning vouchers in order to receive free food. Both companies have identified consumer buying behaviours in order to generate specific groups to meet buying characteristics. In conclusion, McDonald's use a variety of consumer behaviour theories in order to make their most recent marketing campaigns and adverts more successful. The adverts and campaigns were proved to be successful as there was a big increase in sales after each one. Cognitive learning is a commonly used by McDonald's as it attracts and persuades potential customers to the restaurants. They also use visual marketing frequently in their advertisements to try and stimulate consumers' desire to purchase their food. They also use ads to appeal to the conscious mind.